This is Impact on BBC World News. Officials in the Philippines say at least five people are known to have died in the destruction caused by Typhoon Rai, which is continuing its path across the archipelago. More than 300,000 people sought emergency shelter after the storm made landfall. It first hit a popular tourist island on Thursday, bringing winds of 195 kilometres per hour. Elsewhere, flash floods have caused rivers to burst and coastal communities have been hit by storm surges. Senator Richard Gordon is the chairman of Philippines Red Cross and I asked him about the ongoing rescue mission. We have to cope with uh, uh, unreachable uh, areas because of uh, debris on the roads, uh, bridges that, have, uh, that are dangerous to cross, uh, airports are diminished. Uh, for example, in Shargao, the terminal is completely out. In Cebu, there are still no flights. These are island provinces. That makes it very difficult for us to traverse. You have to take a boat. Now that you don't have the plane capability, we hope that they can fix it up so we can get in. In the meantime, we're putting in communications systems such as satellite phones. Because much of the satellite system, much of the phone systems are down in Mindanao especially. And it's very spotty in the Visayas Islands. So you can imagine what we have to cope up with. We have to bring... Uh, ready to eat meals because people are in roofs in flooded areas uh, and they're waiting to be assisted. We're, we have already fed 20,000 people with hot meals and we're looking not only at the evacuation centers but those outside who stayed in their homes who have lost their homes completely. So uh, it's not a very pretty situation. Yeah, and uh, we can appreciate just how challenging it must be. Uh, the Philippines, obviously, no stranger to this kind of disaster. Uh, how much does your experience count in, in dealing with this? Obviously, it's different every single time. Well, m mercifully, uh, there are less casualties, but I still think that the casualties are going to grow. Economic damage is severe. Uh, crop, uh, crops have been destroyed and also... Remember that these are touristic areas. These are islands where a lot of tourists will go. And yes, when we're about to get out of the pandemic and the variant uh, Omicron is still upon us, it's not have gotten here big time, but we do expect it to happen maybe in February or March. But nonetheless, uh, this will affect the population uh, capability to, uh, uh, to have livelihood. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned COVID and, and just how much more complicated does the situation make what you are trying to do, people gathering in, in such large numbers in emergency shelters? Well, that's a problem, isn't it? So that's why we're giving face masks, uh, especially in the evacuation centers, because they're at close quarters. Our medical doctors and nurses and uh, technicians are also in ports where they have about 6,000 people who are stranded in ports. And in the evacuation centers, we have to make sure that we find out who's got coughs and colds and our ambulances are ready to take them to our hospitals. Mercifully enough, there are enough hospitals operating and our ICUs are not overly stressed right now. But we're trying to cope with every conceivable problem that may occur. Yeah, and Senator Gordon, how optimistic are you that you can reach and get to anyone who is still waiting for your help? We're doing everything. Uh, payloaders are being brought to bear so that we can cross. Uh, we're using uh, uh, 10-wheeler trucks. Uh, we have uh, eight water tankers, uh, three of them in Mindanao and three in the Visayas. Uh, these are 10,000-liter water tankers. We're distributing jerry cans. And the uh, quicker we do that, the better. And, of course, we're also sending generators. We already have generators on the ground. We'll have to add. People have to recharge their phones. So not only our people, our staff have to recharge their phones, our volunteers, but also people who need to call. And that's why we're putting in a satellite dish, uh, particularly in Surigao and maybe in Bohol, so that they can con contact their families who are worried about that. That's really stress for many families as well. So uh, the important thing now is to try and get uh, food ready to eat uh, and at the same time make sure that they know that hope springs eternal, that hope is in the way. Senator Richard Gordon speaking to me from Manila. He's head of Philippines Red Cross.